In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Rest Assured to download files. Now, Rest Assured is normally an API testing library. I documented it in my book, Automating and Testing a REST API. So if you want to know how to use it for testing REST APIs, you can have a look at that. What I'm going to do in this example is show you how to download files. I don't think I covered this in the book, but very often if I'm scraping data from a website or I want to download images or any files that I've uploaded, if I want to back up my information from a website where I'm doing um, automated GUI, um, execution and I want to download files as part of that and maybe a PDF is generated there's a link on the site I want to download the PDF I won't use WebDriver to do that I'll use an HTTP library and very often because I know rest assured I'll use rest assured as my initial HTTP library so I'm going to show you that in here now the first way that I download files is usually very hacky so I write code like this. Now let's quickly look at this. Basically, this is a single method. It's, been, it's called write image if not exists. I pass in all the details for the, the file path, the file name. Basically, I'm saying if the uh, output file does not exist, like I in, as in I only want to download this if the file hasn't already downloaded, then here I'm setting up a hash map to put in cookies. Because very often if I'm downloading stuff, I don't want to have to log in through the front end. This is true also if I'm doing WebDriver automating. My WebDriver process might have logged in. It's done all the proper approaches. It's now on a page where the files exist. Um, I've scraped it to find out all the, the file names. But I don't want rest assured to have to log in and get a session cookie. So what I'll do is I'll take the session cookie from WebDriver, slap it into um, rest assured, by adding it as a cookie and then just make the request. So rest assured doesn't have to log in. I give it the session ID and it just acts as though it was the GUI. And here's the main code. This single line is saying, given the particular cookies I want, get the URL from this particular um, place, then um, convert that into a byte array. And that's what it does. There's no checking as to whether the URL is valid, whether the um, the file exists at that URL, it just says, do a get, give me the byte array, then write that out to a file. So here's the output. It's basically saying, create a new file output stream, write the byte array, then close that. There's no error handling, this is very tactical. Get the data, write the data. That's it, pretty simple, how you would use rest assured. But in order to show you it slightly better, in my library examples project, in the rest assured section, I've got an example for downloading a file and you can have a look at that. I'm going to show you it running here so that we can explain it in a bit more detail. So here's the code. Here's the project. I've already run this before, so I've downloaded it. So I'm just going to delete that folder just so you can see it all running from scratch. So I've got a test here called can download files with rest assured. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So in my download a file example test, there's a test method called can download files with rest assured. So what I'm doing here is I'm defining the folder that I'm going to download this file to. I'm just calling it downloads. By default, when I run this test in the root folder of my project, it will create a, prod a folder called downloads. That's what this does here. I'm creating a new file and I'm saying make dirs. If this was longer, download slash text files, it would download the entire, it would create the entire folder path. I'm just having one level. Here, if I wanted to, I could set up cookies. Sometimes when we bypass authentication processes, we might have to change headers, particularly if we're using REST APIs, we might have to set, put in specific headers for it to be authenticated. I would do that here. I don't need to do any of that on GitHub because it's public. So what I've done is I've hard coded in the URL. So somewhere along the line, we've managed to get the URL for the thing that we're going to download. And I've just put this in the code here. Sometimes if you are extracting URLs from JSON or you've got it through an API, it may be encoded. So you may have to decode it to make it completely valid um, URL. Like it may have things like uh, Ampersands encoded as uh, Unicode. It may have them HTML encoded. Like who knows how they've encoded it. The, the URL decode creates a valid URL 
that we can use in our HTTP call. So I've just put that in there. Here I'm hard coding the name of the file. Sometimes I'll uh, timestamp it, sometimes I'll put the UUID in, sometimes I'll um, handcraft that from various bits of information. But I'm just going to do it with a hard coded value at the moment. For the purposes of this test, I'm going to delete the file if it already exists so that my test can check if it actually downloaded it. And here is the method that actually does the work. So I'm just going to run this first so that you can see um, what happens when we do this. So I'll debug. So now we've created the folder, or we haven't created it, we've set up the folder name. I'm going to do make dirs. That should create the folder. If I open this in Finder, we'll see it that way. That will refresh a little bit more, a little bit faster. So it's created my downloads folder. There's nothing in the downloads folder yet. So all this is doing is creating blank hash maps. This is the URL to download. To show you the impact of potentially having to decode the URL, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly edit this. I'll put in the uh, percent %2f, which would be the um, slash. So now we can get a URL. This would probably work, but it's not as nice as it could be. Using the URL decode, if I take this code here, just evaluate that for the second, you can see that when I call this, that percent %2f has been converted into a slash. So I'm just setting up the URL to be valid. So we've just encoded it, decoded it there. So now we've got a valid URL. Set up the download file. I'm going to check if the download file exists, which it currently doesn't. So we'll skip over that. Then we're going to just download the file. I'll walk through the download file method in a moment. So it's downloaded it. We can see it in there in our folder. Then my test is basically doing a, an assertion. So it's checking, does that file exist? Yes. So what I'll do now is I'll delete this again, and then I'll run the test again, but show you what the download URL as file method is doing. All right, so we know the basic mechanism that's been set up here. I'll just put a breakpoint there, and then I'll explain it as we go through. So I'll just debug this. Okay, so here we are in the download as file. Now we've passed in the cookies that we want to set up, the headers, the URL we're going to download, the output path that we want to output it to, and the file name that we want to write it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that path and I'm going to take that file name and combine them into a, a, a file. So now output file has got the um, file name there. And then if I output to that, I'll put it in the root of the folder. So I'm going to make a rest assured call. And this rest assured call says, given the headers and the cookies, we're not authenticating, but if we were, this would set the request up to be authenticated. When we get this URL that we're going to download, which we've made sure is valid, then just return, which is going to return the response, not the body is bytes, the entire response. So it's issuing the request now. Now, because I've returned the response, I'm able to check the status code. This is better long term. What if I had tried to download a file that didn't exist? It would return a 404. If I tried to write those bytes out, we'd probably get an error message. So I don't want to do that. What I want is to know that I'm downloading the actual file and the file exists. So I'm doing a check the status code. It's a 200. Therefore, we can download this file. Now, I'm just checking first to see if the file exists because in this code, I just want to overwrite uh, files if they do exist. Sometimes I might say, if it exists, don't bother writing it again. We'll keep the version that's there. Sometimes I say, if the file exists, don't bother even getting the file. Don't make the request because I'm happy with the one that's been cached. Here, I'm always downloading it. So it doesn't exist, so I don't have to delete it. now. One of the other benefits of getting the response is that I can check to see what type of file it is. So here, if I do get header, evaluate this, I can see that it's a, a plain text file. So I might then choose to add a dot text on the back. If it was a, an image file, I might choose to add dot PNG or dot JPEG, depending on what file comes back. 
but here I've hard coded it to dot text. So now I know what type it is. I know that the file exists when I downloaded it. So I'm going to write the contents to a file. And this is the same as we did before in the hacky tactical code. I'm converting the body into a byte array. So this will handle binary files as well as text files. Then I'll create an output stream. I will write the byte array to the output stream and then I will close the file. So we've written it out, finished the test. We should in here now have the downloaded file. Great. Now, just to demonstrate that it can download binary files, what I'll do, um, let's use the avatar. So that's an image, uh, open image, new tab. So there I've got the URL. What I'll do in my code here, I will put in the URL. Now, I think it's probably going to be a PNG. So I'll create download file.png. So now let's uh, I will break point at the point where we get the file type back. So this is going to download the avatar. OK, so we've got the file um, and I'm just going to check that the header, which I've system outputted, so it's in the console. So that says downloading an image PNG, so my um, extension is fine. But that's why we might want to use the content type to control the extension so that when we're downloading a file, we've always got the correct extension on there. I was lucky that I hard coded it correctly. So I'll just run this. In my download folder now, we should have the PNG, download PNGs the image 4K PNG. So we can download binary files, text files. It's very simple code. And you saw that it can be even simpler if you want just a very tactical approach with no real error handling. This is a little bit more robust. You can find this code online in the library examples, in the rest assured folder, in the download example test. And you can download this, check this project out, experiment with it. Um, and if this code meets your needs, put it in your project. Otherwise, write code that fits the needs that you have for downloading files. But remember, I will often use code like this during uh, automating a GUI to download files. I don't want to configure the browser so that it doesn't prompt me to download files and always downloads it in a certain location. I will. I, I rarely want to test whether a browser can download files, right? I know that browsers can download files. I don't want to test that. What I want is the file so that I can then do some um, assertions on the file itself. So I'll just go and get the raw file and pull it out without having WebDriver do it. It's important that when we use our tools and libraries that we use them for the right things. WebDriver is there to allow us to automate the GUI and actions on the GUI, but not necessarily to download files. That's what HTTP requests are for. And that's when I'll introduce an HTTP library. And here I'm using rest assured simply because it's simple and I know how to do it. So hopefully you find some useful information in the code. You can learn from it. There's other things in the library's examples showing some basic use of JSON, Hamcrest, JSOUP. I could have used JSOUP to do this. I chose to do rest assured. And if you are interested in rest assured and API testing, do check out my book because it shows how to use um, rest assured and how to test an API in general.